Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. John McGregor here again from Foundation Expo 88 and the 25th anniversary of World Expo 88 People's Committee. And we're continuing our special interview with Mr. Gary Balkan, very well-known Brisbane restaurateur and brainchild of the Kookaburra Queens, which were a central focus point of the eateries at Brisbane's World Expo 88 and one of the most successful uh, restaurants at World Expo 88 as well. So some of you may know from the previous video that um, Mr. Gary Balkins has in fact been to several World Expos before World Expo 88 and uh, some of the ideas very early in that stage for building the Kookaburra Queens came from visiting some of these expos overseas. So what was the first expo that you visited, Gary? At New Orleans. New yes. Orleans, so that was 1984. That's right. And uh, yes, and uh, I enjoyed going on the uh, Mississippi Queen and uh, those and there was another paddle steamer there as well in New Orleans. And uh, it was, they were pretty good compared to my poultry Bonaparte's I flayed on the Brisbane River, which is a small one that only took about 60 or 70 people for a musical review. But uh, I then started to think of a bigger boat and uh, for the coming expo. And uh, because the smaller boat had been so successful, I... Uh, then came back to Brisbane and uh, a couple of months later, uh, Brian Thompson had heard I was looking for something like that and uh, he came up with the actual drawings and plans of a paddle wheeler. And, uh, but it, but uh, it was too short and uh, so he revisited the plans and made it into a hundred feet and uh, and he, he organised some great timbers. Originally, he'd, with the smaller one, he said, I've got a 60-foot a, uh, piece of iron bark here. He said, it's great for the keel. I said, but 60 feet's not enough. So he rang me a week later and said, it's great news. He said, I've sourced out from the Gippie Forestry a 100-foot iron bark for the keel. And uh, I said, great, that's my hometown. <laughs> wow. And um, apparently there was enough timber uh, in the Kookaburra Queen one to make several or, or more well, than several 30, houses. 37 houses each boat. Right. Yeah, and there were 35 uh, shipwrights and apprentices who worked on each boat. And um, what actual type of, apart from the keel, what, can you tell us anything about the wood that was used for the rest of the boat? Well, they're mainly Australian timbers, I think, except for the Oregon. Uh, the white beech, uh, I remember clearly, uh, Ryan said, oh, we shouldn't really put white beech on it, you know, it's more expensive and it may have to be replaced at a later date. He said, because ladies walk on their high heels. Well, I said, yes, well, we'll have to supervise that, <laughs> which it didn't really happen. And, uh, but uh, the, boat, the boats did look great in those days. Now they've been restored and, uh, and uh, no, they didn't pick white beach again. Right. And when was Kookaburra Queen 1 actually launched onto the Brisbane River? Uh, April the 12th was uh, the first voyage, first right. business voyage. This was 1986? 86. Right. And uh, yes, we'd had about three weeks of trials. One, uh, one trial was to Bishop Island, which I owned the resort there for a while. And... Uh, it, was, it only went at six knots compared to the later boats, uh, nine, eight or nine knots. And we were travelling down fairly slowly down to Bishop Island and uh, David Shung, my very good chef, came up to join Sonny Shatling, you may remember, boss of 20th Century Fox, always a very witty fellow. And I introduced David Shung to him and uh, Sonny said, where are you from? He said, China. And uh, Sonny said, quick as a flash, he said, Gee, I, I thought we were travelling, we've been travelling a long way. <laughs> yeah. And quite from early on, you had some letters of congratulation from the World Expo 88 Organising Committee. Uh, I'm looking here at, at a letter from um, the director, one of the directors of World Expo 88, Rick Birch, dated 26th of February 1986, uh, congratulating you on the launch of the Kookaburra Queen and uh, hoping that it will become a part of Expo 88, so that was part of your idea in your mind that it would become a feature at Expo 88 as well? Yes, I, I had planned to use Bonaparte's Afloat as the seafood restaurant moored 
But then uh, the cost of doing it and what it would be worth later, I was concerned about. So instead, I uh, started looking for a bigger boat. Uh, well, I looked for a steel hull so that after Expo, I could use it out in the bay. Right. And so it would be more stable in the bay. And um, I went to uh, a couple of shipyards, but I was giving up to the extent. And then uh, Millcraft approached me with plans for the stern wheeler that I was after, but it wouldn't hull again. And uh, I agreed because there was only a short time to go, a bit over 12 months. And I said, if you can have it built ready for the first morning of Expo, I'll sign it. And uh, so I went ahead and, uh, and uh, that was the beginning of Kookaburra Queen 2. Okay, so Kookaburra Queen 1, to be permanently moored at the board was at the boardwalk, was yes. it near the boardwalk? Yeah. And the boardwalk, as you may know, was a very popular series of eateries um, at Expo 88. And Kookaburra Queen 1, for the duration of Expo 88, was permanently moored at the boardwalk there. Um, can you tell us a bit about the menu for the Kookaburra Queen 1 during Expo 88? Well, on the lower level, I was selling uh, casual food like prawn cutlets and prawn kebabs, uh, prawn and fish and vegetable. Uh, sort of half a dozen oysters and m mainly things that they could take away and just eat and just uh, on the decks. Mm. And upstairs I had a formal seafood dining room and uh, as we went along uh, it, it, we, we did extremely good business and uh, we averaged about 120 to 150,000 a week on each boat, wow. cruising boat as well for the first couple of months of Expo. I got up to 200 uh, 200,000 in the last two months of Expo each, so we were taking 400,000 a week. Now that may not seem a lot now, but then you multiply by that by about three or four at least since 1988 or three mm -hmm. anyway. It was a lot of money to be taking for just mainly food. Mm. And so Kookaburra Queen permanently moored at the boardwalk. Um, you came up with the idea later on to have an extra Queen, Kookaburra Queen 2, to do the cruising on the Brisbane River during Expo 88 as well. And uh, Kookaburra Queen 2 was actually launched um, during the Expo at the beginning, at the very beginning, yes. on, on the opening day, wasn't I, it? I was invited to the South Bank uh, launch of Expo and I was standing there looking right up the corner of the, the bend of the river, hoping that Kookaburra Queen 2 would be coming around the corner. I was very much on edge and then suddenly I saw it come around the corner with the, it actually had a function on board for that by the Ganim family and uh, it was uh, a wonderful sight and turned to quite a few heads amongst the few hundred people there at, the, uh, at Joe's launch and of course the Queen was there too. But uh, yes, the, the, the uh, stern wheel of... Yes, and actually the Queen uh, also came up the river that, that, that same day as well to open World Expo 88. So, so many Queens on the, on the Brisbane River that day. There were. Yes. Well, I think that just about wraps it up for this interview with Mr. Balkan. Thank you very much for your time this morning. It's been wonderful to see your, to hear your insights into the Kookaburra Queen at Expo 88. Of course, the Kookaburra Queens are still very much a love feature of uh, eating here in Brisbane. And if you're visiting Brisbane uh, from overseas or interstate, we'd very much like you to uh, come and have lunch or an afternoon cruise or a dinner on the Kookaburra Queen. And we certainly hope that for 2014 for the G20, that some of our uh, visiting heads of state will do the same. John McGregor from Foundation Expo 88 and 25th anniversary of World Expo 88 People's Committee with Mr. Gary Balkan signing off. Thank you.